Although I do try to cover a wide range of electronic drums on this channel, a lot of people know me for working with Roland modules. I often get asked what I think about brands like Alesis, and to be honest, outside of a couple of drum pads and cymbal pads, I don't really have a great deal of experience with their gear, so I thought that it was about time that I rectified that. Oh, I need... been opened before this. It is a little bit plasticky compared to things like the TD50, as you would sort of expect for this price. And to be honest, you know, modules like the TD27 are also very plasticky, so it is what it is. Faders all feel quite nice. Rubber feels decent on the buttons. I am trying to work out whether or not this has been used before. So we've got the headphone jack, kick, snare, tom one, two, three, four, hi-hat control, hi-hat, crash one, ride one, ride two, crash two, and crash three. Full MIDI out, full MIDI in. Got a bunch of direct outputs. Got the master output over here. Display contrast, that's an interesting knob to have on the back, isn't it? Auxiliary in. There's an SD card here. Always nice to see an SD card included, 16 gig, and a USB port. So things look decent to begin with. And you know what, the accessories haven't been opened, so probably not been fully opened. I think just the box has been. Ah, now this is nice to see. So there's a full cable loom included, which I actually wasn't expecting at all. That's really nice because uh, TD50 doesn't come with a cable loom, you have to buy it yourself. Now any of the rolling modules that require cable snakes come with a loom, but the TD50 doesn't, and it also didn't come with a mounting pad, which the Elisa Stride does. It's just a very basic plastic one, but it's nice to see that in the box too. There's also some Velcro cable wraps, and I assume this is the power adapter. Yep, power supply. Again, that doesn't look used. So that's filling me with a bit more confidence. And these will be for mounting the plate, I would imagine. So far, double thumbs up. So this is the pad setup that I'm going to use to test out the Elisa Strike. Now it might have its work cut out for it because one thing that I've heard about the Strike module is that it doesn't have quite as many flexible trigger parameters as some of the other brands. So we'll see how well it gets on because there's a few different kinds of triggers going on here. In the 13 inch snare, the 12 inch rack tom and this 14 inch floor tom there are drone halo triggers. In this 13 inch floor tom there's a gear drum 3CS trigger. In this 10 inch tom pad, there's a DIY side trigger, and the kick drum is also a DIY trigger. And then for the cymbals, I've got a Yamaha PCY135 that I use as a hi hat pad, so it's not their actual hi hat pad, it's just a normal cymbal pad, and I'm using a GoE drum controller. I've got a Roland CY15R, an ATV 18 inch, and a Lemon 18 inch. So let's see how well it fares. doesn't like this trigger.
The hi-hat seems to be giving me issues. The open and close range on the controller aren't right, so I'm swapping it out for a Roland FD7 pedal with an X-hat stand to put the pad on to try and solve it. I'm also getting some double triggering and I'm not sure whether it might be to do with an interaction with the hi-hat stand. Nope, the double triggering is still happening and I don't know why because it doesn't happen on any other modules that I use this pad with. So I'm checking out my pad just to be sure. Right, time to swap this out for a 15 inch lemon symbol. I just recorded a bunch of footage and I noticed while playing that now and again, especially on the low dynamics, I was getting a lot of uh, phasing or double triggering on the snare. And then when I've just come back to listen to it now, I've noticed it even more, it seems to be all over the place. For example here, as you can see on these main hits there's some double triggers, there's some extra ghost triggers from some other pads as well, and then when you come over here there's also a bunch of extra triggers on the light hits too. And that's not how I intended to play it if you have a listen. So yeah, those were definitely not intentional and there just don't seem to be enough controls to dial it out fully. If I increase the retrigger cancel then I start losing a lot of hits that I'm intending to do and there's no parameters for things like scan time or no additional presets for different kinds of pads as far as I can tell. I do actually have some Elisa Strike 14 inch pads but unfortunately they all broke so even though I've fixed them they don't really trigger the same way that they used to. So although I will be testing those pads out right now just for the sake of being able to listen to the rest of the kits I'm actually going to feed all of the triggers back into the TD50 and then I'm going to send the MIDI data out to the strike module just to see how it goes.
Okay, first impressions are a bit of a mixed bag. I was obviously having some triggering issues and this module's clearly designed with Elisis's own pads in mind. Now that's not necessarily the wrong approach, that's also the case with pretty much every manufacturer that makes both modules and kits, but Roland and many of the other brands give you a lot more tools to sort of iron things out when you're using other pads. The trigger settings available in the Strike module are minimal, verging on too few in my opinion. Now this does keep things simple and if I was using only Elise's pads that might be all that I need. However in my case where I've got a lot of pads that need a bit more dialing in this just didn't work for me. Sending the MIDI into it from the TD50 made everything a lot more enjoyable because it meant I could just focus on actually playing the sounds rather than trying to play around the triggering issues. It's by no means a perfect solution, it didn't solve everything and it also throws up a few of its own issues, but it did the job just to carry on testing. Something that I'm not a huge fan of with this module is the fact that it can't detect true rim shots. Higher end Roland modules and the Pearl Mimic Pro for example can do this. You'll have one sound for the head, one sound when you hit just the rim alone, so either a cross stick or a rim click, and then when you hit the head and the rim together it will play a rim shot sound like an acoustic drum. It's a really useful feature to have but unfortunately the Strike can't do it and it's not alone in that. The Gaver G9 couldn't do it and I don't believe that the 2-box drum at 5 Mark II can do it either. The onboard sounds are also a little bit of a mixed bag. There are a lot of presets, I think there was 136, this is the newest software version, and to be honest this felt like a bit much to me but you can't really knock them for giving people choice. And the positive side of this is that a fair few of them are actually usable. There were a handful of them that I really enjoyed playing and even some of the gimmicky kits were a little bit more fun and more usable than in other modules. For the individual acoustic style sounds, in particular I wasn't a huge fan of a lot of the hi-hats. The majority of them seem to have very limited bow and edge samples and they seem to machine gun quite a bit. Having better dynamics with my MIDI setup made them a lot more fun and usable but the limitations are still clearly there. Most of the kick drums were decent, there seems to be a reasonable amount of variety in there. The Tom also seem quite varied and decent. Out of the box they're probably far more usable than a lot of Roland Toms, though they're definitely not up there with the likes of a Mimic Pro or a VST, especially when it comes to dynamics. Many of the snare drums sound pretty good too, but you do notice the lack of layers when it comes to playing them dynamically. There's something about the lower velocities on quite a few of them that I wasn't a big fan of. And then the crashes, the rides and the other cymbals all seemed pretty serviceable. A lot of the electronic sounds are very similar to what you get in a Roland module, although some of them do seem a bit more punchy and modern which is nice and a lot of the percussion sounds are quite nice too but both of those style of sounds are quite limited because they're pretty much all one shot samples or have very limited sample layers. I'm also well aware that you can load multi-layer samples into this module and that's going to open things up a lot, so I'm really looking forward to delving into that feature. As an overall package it seems like this module does a lot for the price and I've been pleasantly surprised so far, however whether or not it does some of the fundamentals well enough remains to be seen. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see any other first impressions check out this playlist here or there's plenty of really in-depth reviews on this channel. Don't forget to check out my store at theedrumworkshop.com for more kits and samples for your electronic drum modules. Some will eventually be coming for the strike. And above all, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!